first and foremost, uh, TA, we all have that pretty, pretty well, uh, within, within our grasp and, you know, we've got it, we've got a good feeling for TA and uh, have a good belt on it and, and everything with technical should be pretty clear at this point, uh, origin levels, uh, things like this, breakout points, um, trends, local, global, all, all the fun TA stuff we all, we all know pretty well by now. So, uh, just keep it in mind while we're doing this. All right, so the mental side of things, we're going to start by possibly looking at, uh, sure, we'll just go right here with the random spot. I'm going to just mark this uh, currently to where it will be, um, swing to swing. Uh, for this, we're going to use, because it's local time frame, we are going to use uh, accumulation candles due to the local nature of, uh, of the time frame. So whenever we look at a trade, um, I've commonly told people that you have to have an excuse to enter a trade. Uh, anytime you're looking at any single chart, you always have to have an excuse to enter a trade. Somebody had mentioned today that uh, another coin is looking good, and maybe we'll do a split screen for this right now for a quick second. Uh, they had mentioned that it was looking good today. That was uh, Elphis who mentioned that. So we're just going to simply remove uh, what we have drawn on Dent, quickly take a look at Dent, and start to assess whether this is a position that we want to enter or not. Uh, I could have just kind of draw the uh, swing to swing. So you've got Come on, magnet. So we've got right there, uh, swing to swing, kind of this uh, area that Dent has been trying to break out of. Maybe just for ease of use, we'll just uh, snap it to that one there. That's fine. So we've identified that this is a good trade. We, we look at this thing, we say, okay, this is a good trade. Um, or maybe we haven't identified that far yet, if it's a good trade. Uh, we, we identify uh, whatever levels we have to on this thing. We draw our technicals. Uh, inverse levels that have been tested. Draw this thing out a little bigger. Mark this as an inverse level. Going to uh, also mark the valley that starts it uh, right here. Sure, that looks great. Um, so we have a pretty, pretty basic few things that we can ascertain off the move already. We have our, our top valley level. We have the inverse that was tested. We have the valley it's trying to break out right now. And then we would simply draw an uptrend. So this is the technicals, right? Like this is, this is very straightforward, very simple. The, uh, the rules that we're creating on our chart. So the first thing you have to realize is that these are a set of rules that we're creating on a chart. They can never be respected indefinitely you have your own human error that you fall subject to. So when you're drawing these levels on a chart, they may not always be correct, right? That's the first thing everybody has to always realize when, when you talk about making decisions, because really at the end of everything, it comes down to making a decision of entering or exiting a trade. Uh, and if you're in a trade, when you're going to purchase, leave, what your expectations are, exactly what you want out of that trade, right? So if you look at something like Dent here, uh, I, I would look at Dent right now in the current space it's in, and I would say, okay, well, what, what is my expectation here? If I enter this trade, where, 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 am, I, uh, where am I selling? If, if we go to Dent and kind of take this trade back to this point here, and this often happens in these low sat coins, happens in MFT, happens in everything. Um, you have to realize what the potential gain on this trade is, right? 38%, that's a good trade. That's assuming you could buy at, at 12 and sell at 13. So let's actually take the trade to where we can actually make money. So in a best case scenario, we can make 23% on this trade, right? So again, we always have to have uh, an excuse as to why we are looking to uh, take this trade. So let's walk through the replay for a moment here. Right. So fine, you have the opportunity to uh, actually buy here at, uh, you know, best case scenario, buy here at 12. So uh, that was a great trade to take. You know, you could garnish possibly 30%. If it hits your level, more likely you're going to be selling here. 22% there to start. We've uh, had a little bit of patience in this trade, identified where we wanted to see the coin break down. Um, 33%. So this, this is a pretty good trade. So let's, let's take a look at this thing a little further. This has been failing trend. So the first thing, again, going, going back to 
you know, going, going to the mental analysis side of things, um, the first thing we always have to do is have an excuse and a reason to enter a trade, right? We, we always have to have some type of excuse. So before you ever take any trade, you always have to look at the bottom of the trade and, and try your uh, best to buy the bottom. Because if you're not buying the bottom, you're just increasing your risk. So anytime you have bought uh, 14 sats and misidentified the proper spot to buy, you have increased risk. Anytime you've bought 13, you've increased risk. Anytime you've bought 12, you have still potentially increased risk. So every time you are taking this trade, every time you are looking at this thing as it's going through distribution, you really have to have a reason to enter the trade, right? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not enough to just break a trend, right? You have to have a reason. We, we already know that this is backtesting a fractal leg in there. This is the day we, it's going to be backtesting a fractal leg. You can tell by the way this candle is right here, right? You can tell that there's a little bit of up and down in here, which is going to give you a uh, valley in here, right? So, so we already know we're backtesting a leg uh, the second we hit, what is this, 14 sat? So, so we already know distribution is happening from this point here. So if you were in this trade and looking at this trade in the moment, which is kind of the point of this, at this moment, you already know you're uh, breaking the move. Yes, yes, you're holding a hold level on one side of this. You have hit a hold level here, but you're also breaking a fractal leg. So this is probably most likely not done distributing. And, and the reason we can ascertain that is because we did hit an inverse level. So this coin is not ready to ladder yet until it is actually broken out of its valley and targeted something that can actually sustain its move up. So for that reason, um, we can never actually enter this trade. So, so whenever you're entering a trade, you have to look for the right spot to be in. Because first and foremost, this doesn't become a question of technicals. This becomes a question of, of patience. right? And this becomes a question of entering the trade at the right spot. It's, it's the same thing as uh, buying over here in this zone. Sometimes, and we'll go through this in a little bit, sometimes you are better off buying success, even though the uh, SAT value is higher rather than buying uh, something that you're trying to catch a falling knife on. Catching a falling knife is great when it's clean. If we have untested levels from the past here and here and here, this is all great and dandy. But unless you have actually identified uh, an untested hold level, there, you really don't have an excuse to get into this trade on debt. There, and there, there's really no reason to, because you, know, you look at how far trend is away. There, there really is no reason to enter debt at any point here other than catching a falling knife and having some big bounce target like this, right? This is a pretty unsafe trade on debt. Even, even buying here is, is relatively unsafe unless you are breaking this thing down and finding that reason as to why debt can be a, a smart trade here. You look at the trend on this thing and it really doesn't give you any, like you, you have a local trend break here, right? That's that's about the only indication you have on this trade is that you've just had a local trend break and you have this kind of bounce reaction to an inverse level, therefore pushing you down further, right? So I, I, I'm failing to see a reason to enter this trade here other than this trend break right here, which is very local. You know, today is all about identifying spots that we can control, right? You, you look at trying to take a trade and, and always have an ex having an excuse to enter a trade. And that's something I really want to emphasize on, on everybody is that there is a ton of, of uh, coins in this market. There are uh, every five minutes, something is moving. There's the AST, there's TNT, there's all these coins that are moving up. And right now you can think of probably 10 or 15 that have moved up in the course of a few days. There, there is always something moving up. You never have to be in a trade, right? There's always something moving up. So unless you have a really good reason to get the trade, you, you really just shouldn't be trading. It's as simple as that because the whole point of, of mental analysis is to, uh, and, and acting like a professional in trading, is to find these spots where you can take statistical advantages, where, where you can say, okay, I, I can identify something that I know is going to get me two or 3% or four or 5%. And you have to scale this to, to your own personal goals too. Some people want to be swing traders and and they want to um that is more of my style as of recently just just due to time reasons um i am a good example of someone who swing trades because i have a limited amount of time i swing trade and take positions that i want to be in for mm, maybe a few days at a time and then and then i'm picking the strongest positions that i have time to identify within that time frame frame right if, if you're entering a trade like dent this is more of a scalp trade this is this is something that it is something you have to micromanage in the moment. This is, this is a falling trade where you have to micromanage it in the moment to try to find the bottom before a larger move up. You have to have an excuse to enter a trade. 
there, there again, there, there's just an endless amount of coins that you can get into. There, there's no reason to fall in love with charts. And, and, and you know, um, for the person who did uh, submit this, it, although it does look like a great chart, uh, we're going to break down a little bit of it going forward in this move. This, this might not actually be a good trade. It does look good, but this is a common problem that people, they draw some trend line like this and they fall in love with the trade. They absolutely fall in love with uh, what could potentially be happening in, in the move. That's that's something I see all the time. People people fall in love with trades, and I'm going to make this backside of this trend purple for this example. The backside of trend, you know, we have falling price and dent. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, we we need to identify something worth getting into, right? And this this comes down to mindset because you can't just chart a coin and, and enter it or chart a stock and enter it just because it, uh, it may look good and, and, you know, falling in love with positions. And we all do it. I do it too. I'm doing it right now with MDA. I fell in love with MDA because I saw something and I refused to get up because I'm stubborn. This is also partially because I only have time to swing trade right now, but still no excuse. Um, there's a lot of money to be made right now and I've missed a lot of moves, which is fine. That's, uh, I'm okay with that. I've come to peace with that. Um, so, so you can see here, dent is still falling. We really don't have a reason to enter this trade yet. And uh, this becomes a test of discipline as, as good as this looks, you know, where, where do we want to start to think about uh, possibly making a trade in, in dent? Well, we want to, we want to kind of think about making a trade in dent when we can justify that this larger trend can be attacked, right? So the first thing that we need to say is, okay, when can this thing actually be attacked? What is it going to take to attack this thing? Right? So now, now we're not, um, we're, we're not specifically relying on our technicals because we're not saying, okay, there's a hold level here or there's a hold level here um, and, and we have to break this level here. We are not specifically buying a, a certain level. Right now, it's the test of patience against the move, right? There's kind of two ways you could take this trade mentally. You could, you could try to catch the bottom and, and take the risk associated with catching the bottom. If you do take the risk associated with catching the bottom, we are, we are going to talk about that risk a little bit later, right? The, the risk with catching the bottom. Or if there's another part of the trade, which you could wait for it to come up here, test this, and uh, form some type of uptrend and hold the uptrend and you know, kind of buy this breakout moment as it gets closer. Um, th this is more of a accelerated trade. We'll just put ACC for accelerated. This is kind of like the accelerated side of this trade, right? So, so we kind of have this decision uh, paralysis to make. Would we look at this trade mentally? We, we have to make this decision between uh, a high-risk position and an accelerated trade. So there's, there's a bit of a mental shift in the way that both of these trades are going to work. Okay? If you are taking a higher-risk position, if you are taking this side of the trade, which is higher risk, higher reward, it is going to require more mental focus and more mental attention. So this is something that is going to require a larger dissection of, of your time in this coin. This is something that you are going to have to spend more time watching this charting this. And if you can't do that, taking this higher risk position is not going to be conducive to uh, account growth, which is going to affect your mental state, which is going to affect your, your trading capital, which is going to affect everything in, the, in a negative way. When you, when you are taking these falling positions, you have to have the mental fortitude to say, I understand this is a falling position. There are spots where I can control how much I lose in this trade. And there are spots where I can see failure. But before any of that happens, you have to identify what type of trade you are getting into. Right? Are you getting into something that is in a large accumulation zone, so it's a, it's a waiting game? Or are you getting into something that uh, has an accelerated move that's about to happen, which is a uh, test of knowledge with technicals? Right? If you're getting into this position, this is a test of technicals. So what do you do in, in an accelerated position? Well, you have to have a very accurate technical background to uh, take this accelerated position. If you're getting into a position of risk, you have to have a very heavy time investment. So these are two very different types of trades mentally. Again, this, this is a high-risk trade. So let's focus on, on that side of this and uh, I'm going to step back and delete all these weird little typing things I did. So in this scenario here, this is a high risk trade because we know we are trying to break trend on, on a falling stock, right? We are trying to find a bottom. This thing is still looking to uh, bottom up. So if you were to say, decide to take this trade right here, right? We're going to say 11 sats. So we are going to buy 12 sats because we're not, we're not getting filled on, on debt point at 11 sats. You can set a buy order and wait, but realistically, if it were to go down to 11 sats and you were going to get filled, it probably is going to hit 10. So regardless, you know, 90% of those orders will never get filled sitting at 11% because it's just going to wick down and it's going to hold the level and you're going to have a large surge buy. Uh, alternatively, that fails and, and you go down and you 
hit this 11 sat range again and, and, and it instantly pushes down to 10. So, so you actually weren't trying to buy 12 by waiting at 11. You were actually trying to buy 11 by waiting at 10. So, so this is a big identification that a lot of people mistake them too. You, you should never be buying these low sat coins in a position of waiting because if you are buying 11, the only time you're getting filled on 11 is when it's failing to 10. So if it's failing to 10 and you've sat there at 12 to have a buyer to fill that 11, you, you're, mis you're, you're, you're misidentifying the move because you've acted from the decision that 12 sats is what you're buying, not 11. And actually you've broken down to 10, which is, a different, which is an onset of a larger piece of failure that you can't see in that moment. We can't see right now if this is going to fail down to 10. So, so mentally, we have made a mistake already by misidentifying the move. This is not a technical analysis thing. This, this is a knowing of mental fortitude, right? This is not a, oh, the technicals are saying we're going to touch 10. The technicals won't show you if you're going to touch 10 until you actually go forward in this move, try to break over this trend and reject it back down to this range, right? We can't, we can't see that technical piece of the puzzle yet. All, all we can see is the fact that we have assessed that for mental reasons on, on a falling move, we, are, we, have, we do have our technicals, right? We do have this technical downtrend here, the backside of this trend, not a downtrend, but the back, this purple trend line here, the backside trend. So, so we are entering this as a position of risk, which means we have uh, much more time management that we need, right? So again, if you are, if you are sitting here at, a, at, at trying to get filled on 11 sats, you're actually buying the failure into 10, even though you're buying at 12, because you're not going to get into a situation where you sit at 11, it gets filled. This is going to like maybe 10% of people, if they're lucky, 10% will get filled here because this will just kiss, reject off and you move up. So this is something that's important to know with low sat coins specifically in the crypto space, not, not really related to technicals or, or the mental or the technicals too much, but just to know that if you are buying one of these lower sat levels, you should never, ever sit and, 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 and be waiting there at 11 sats. You'll only get filled if it's failing to 10, which means that you didn't chart something because it, it happened after the fact, right? So let's look at this for a second. So we're going to see what happens here over the course of this. Really, this would be an, an excuse to buy. So, so you have kind of this decision to make now between waiting too long. We're going to put WTL here. Oh boy, that's sloppy, but that's okay. WTL, you waited too long, so you didn't actually get the position versus risk on this side, right? So if you are going to enter this trade, every single day that you wait, realize that this is trying, trying to test trend to break out and the injection will happen in seconds. This is like anything that, that moves in stock markets ever. There is a, a balance between waiting too long and risk. This is the uh, same balance, that the same decision that is made mentally based on technicals that if you have entered too early, you are taking too much risk. If you have entered too late, you waited too long and you actually increased your position. In either one of these scenarios of risk or waiting too long, whether you do assume the risk or you wait too long, understand that this trade in itself as a whole, the risk associated with this trade still lies here. You are still in the, in the larger scheme of assessing whether or not you want to take this trade, whether this is a good enough excuse. And I want to Emphasize that again, if this is a good enough excuse to take this trade, if you have identified this as, as a good enough excuse to enter this trade and you are wrong, it means there's a flaw in your technicals, okay? If you have understood that there's a high amount of risk in this trade, but you are right, it means that your technicals are accurate and you made a good decision. If you made a bad decision, it, it can break down into a a different type of, of tree, right? A bad decision can be technical associated. It could be TA associated, right? It could be uh, mental analysis associated, right? So in the case where it's TA associated, it is a misidentification of the technicals that, that, that uh, showed you the incorrect buying area if it was based on technicals. If it was not based on technicals because you waited too long before taking this position of risk in, in a following market, then it became a mental analysis uh, problem where you waited too long and you didn't enter the trade based on what the technicals were showing you. So there are two sides to waiting too long in this, right? One side is showing you where you failed technically and one side is showing you where you failed mentally. So if you do assess this uh, position as a risk position, realize that the first thing you have to do in, in buying kind of this falling position is a lot, a large amount of time because this is something you have to watch to protect account the capital, right? Because if this is failing, it could be a situation like this where you have maybe just bought this right here and then all of a sudden, so you bought the 16 sats thinking this was gonna break up in this moment right here 
you bought this trend break here and you thought it was going to move up. You bought 16 sats right here. It looked like it was about to move and you sat and held and all of a sudden you're down to uh, 12 sats and you just lost 30% of your account, right? Now we won't dissect if this would all obviously be an incorrect sell. We're not dissecting why today, but this would be just, 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 just as a quick reference, this would be an incorrect sell because it is going to have a bounce off of trend and give you some type of reaction that will lead to a higher point to sell, which would minimize the amount of risk you take in this position. It's, it's a different way to measure how much you lose. Again, not important for today. Uh, it will be very important to the future as, as we get there. In this position here, you have a decision to make between risk and waiting too long. As you, as you take this position, really, in, in my opinion, there is only two spots that you should enter in, in, in a choice that you have is an excuse to trade, right? An excuse to get in the trade or another excuse to get in the trade. It's, it's the same thing. It's just a different position, right? So we're going to look at this now. We're going to step forward one candle. This is still now as you assess risk versus waiting too long. This is now assessing the same position. You are trying to hold this level. So, so it looks like you are trying to establish a bottom through the break of trend. This is kind of getting to that point where you need to make your decision. And, and I might even wait one more day here. Um, I'm going to click forward. I have no idea if this is the day it goes up or not. I know it goes up because we've seen the future of the chart, but I, I would probably wait one more day. I think we're still going to see a bottom for one more day. To me, this looks like a good, this is starting to be something that I, I like the way it looks as a bottom. We, we are holding this trend. We are stabilizing. This is, this is entering the territory of this is almost about to execute. Waiting too long is about to execute. So in this first candle here, let's go here. If this was just testing trend, you know, uh, if, if you want to just, um, now this, this is just quick reference off the top of my head. If, if you wanted to say, oh, this has like a 90% chance it's not going to break. Well, if that had a 90% chance, the next day would probably have like a 60% chance it's not going to break. So if you were to scale this every single day, there's going to become a point where everybody has waited to buy this thing and that decision is made, right? That it goes up. And then this is maybe 40%. And then this one we've already seen, which is maybe 30, you know, 30%, you're running out of time. I would say that there's probably one more day left in this. And there was, it still did hit a bottom that day, but you can see where waiting too long would have garnished you a negative result in this trade because you actually identified the correct place to buy. And if you didn't enter the trade, you actually lost money because you invested time into charting this. So if you have invested time into charting this and you have understood this trade as taking risk versus waiting too long, and you have actually identified that this thing is going to move up properly and it, you know, held this base and we, all these things that we just talked about as, as it held the base, as, as you have this decision to make mentally between what amount of risk you are willing to take versus waiting too long and you miss the trade, well, you actually made a mistake. So this is something that you can always on one side of this uh, fence, there's always another trade. So, so with that knowledge that there's always another trade, it should cut out any decision you need to make in here because there's really no excuse or reason to enter this trade in any of this here. That this is, there's, there's just no reason. The, the first thing I can see in this whole entire chart as a reason to enter this trade is, is kind of right here. This is an excuse to enter the trade. It has held its bottom. It has been trending down. It's, it's touched an inverse level. So maybe next it'll come up to attack this valley, right? We have to let the move develop more before we can ascertain if this is uh, going to be a truth or not. But we know that this is at least a tested inverse level. So we know that there is a possibility here that it can come up and touch 24 stats, but we've got a lot of work to do before that. So we're not even thinking about that, but it still is a piece of information that we can use in our charts. This, this is that moment where you, where if you weren't in the trade, you, you lost money by losing time. Because if you've invested time into this chart, you've lost money. At this point here, I don't see a, a reason to enter this trade. If you are in this trade and you identified your sell target as, as this and you sold 14 sats and, and you, know, you made your uh, two sats of profit, that's fantastic. You, you, know, you made 20% or, or you know, whatever, whatever this is here, 16%. That's, that's fantastic. Whether it comes up to here or not is another story. You know, if you want to take that risk, and you'd actually be selling right here, 33%. I'm not sure if it's going to come up to 33%, but at least you have given yourself the option to, right? We're not talking about the technical targets. The technical targets are, are fine and dandy. Uh, that, that's your own choice in the moment as to which you dissect that information for this is mental analysis, right? This, this, this weight of risk versus waiting too long, right? This is the reward. Now, this, this also goes back into your technicals as to where's the reward to catching a falling knife, right? Because you've caught a falling knife here, right? 
Well, that's your reward. That's your reward for catching the falling nays. You're going to step through this another one. And, and it actually does hit its target. That's great. It completes its target. This is showing us that um, we have back tested a valley. If we stopped here, in reality, we would have actually hit an inverse level, not this valley. That valley was created off an inverse level. We're getting into the realm of technicals a bit, but just for the purpose of this, we, these would have been two different outcomes. This would have been failure. Look to find a new low, right? This would have been, and from a technical standpoint, this would have been failure. Try to find a new low. This is succession to push the next valley or the next untested inverse, right? So you, you test an untested inverse here. You have a small pullback and you move up to the valley. That's that's great, right? You you should fully be out of this trade now with a smile on your face because if you if you took the risk here off this uh, falling trend line and you identified it properly and you assumed that risk, um, you would have already had your target. That's fine. It's set, right? Here's the next part of it. We, we've already uh, we, we, we've accept, assessed this risk to waiting too long. Th this cycle is always going to happen uh, across every single coin. We will always have this decision, this decision of how much risk are we willing to take versus what's the perfect moment to buy, right? And, and we have to look at this thing now going forward. So, so all we did was we broke down the trend from a mental aspect point. Now we have to break this thing going forward and say, okay, where's our next good buying opportunity? versus how much risk are we willing to accept in this trade versus uh, what does waiting too long look like? So, so what is the goal here? The, the, the goal is to break this larger trend. So we, we look at the technicals. We, you know, we've made our technical assertion. We've, we've seen what the technicals are doing. But right now becomes a, a choice of, of mental analysis as to where how much risk are we willing to take. And really the goal of everything is to get the, the minimum amount of risk, just like we um, identified here, the minimum amount of risk is always going to garnish you uh, better results for, for obvious reasons. We, we, you know, we don't need to talk about that. If, if you buy cheaper, you're going to make more money. Right? You lose less. Like this is very, um, it would be silly to talk about that. So now we know we have a trend swing high. We back attack this valley. We know uh, our next target on dent, uh, as we can assess it, is, is going to be now probably a push to 24. We know this is true but we still have to take the best entry on this. We still have to have an excuse to enter the trade. I don't see any reasonable uh, excuse in this moment to enter this trade based on our target just being hit. We hit, we hit a local target, that's great. We need to go and break, break trends. So, so we need to start by just identifying hold levels. And each of these will actually be a hold level in here. I wouldn't consider 14 sats a hold level. I would consider 13 and 12, 12 kind of the uh, emergency hold. If 12 can't hold, you're back testing trend to try to break out of another current cycle. So, as you come through, um, even this is, is not going to be respected. You probably just fall straight through that. I, I can't see that. But yeah, you just fall straight through, right? This, this should not be a level you're buying mentally. This is very impatient. This is not the correct uh, assessment of the situation in a technical standpoint. And, and even from an, a technical standpoint, let's, let's forget the mental and, and just go to a technical standpoint. We know we have to break this trend in order to, to, in order to move up. This is fuel for the move. Trend break is fuel. That's If, if you have one term to coin trend break, it would be fuel. It's fuel for the move. So we have to, first off, have patience to allow this move to have proper distribution. There could be a slight bounce here. Is, is it worth the risk? You, you can already see that if there is a bounce here, um, you're buying 14 sats. You could, you could put your buy at 13. It might distribute halfway, 50% of the coin, but realistically, you're gonna be uh, buying 14 because it's gonna bounce and move up fairly quickly. And you may come back up and test uh, 15 or 16 sats. So there is a one sat profit in here, right? So, so if you are to look at what your profit is in this trade, you are looking at potentially making 8% versus potentially losing 12% and, or, or further down because we could really just fail this trend. So, so really this is not an excuse to buy regardless of if this coin goes up, this could, this could just soar right up and, and we could have missed a, a pretty crazy trade on this. To me, this is not an excuse to buy. This is a, a, a weak even, even if you could have made 80%, this is a weak reason to buy, and it's a very uh, untrained thought process if you were to buy this whole level just because, because even if this whole level hold, it still has to hold all the way up to here to, to June before it can actually move up. We need to see if, if you believe this is going to ladder up, the first entry you should be taking is at 12 sats, which is, in this case, in distribution, it may sit here and, and hit 12 over and over and over and over. So I think in this case, 12 sats is an okay buy because we have hit a valley and we are trying to create an uptrend here. So I think in this case, 12 sats is an okay buy. I don't necessarily think you're going to get filled. But from a technical standpoint, if we're creating an uptrend, yes, 12 will be tested. And if it holds, we're going to move up. So to start with, we know trend is way out here. 
we have time in this trade. Realize that there is time. There is no rush to buy at 13 cents here. Uh, again, a, a test of patience. We have a lot of up and down that could happen to, before, before we get to this same point here that we identified first, right? This trend right here, before we even get to this trend, there is a large amount of time that has to happen. So patience is, is uh, you know, to say patience is a virtue would be very cliche, but extremely accurate here. There is no rush to get into this trade. Again, there, there's your one sat profit. Was, was the risk reward worth it? For some, maybe, but I, I don't believe uh, in this case it was. Oh, what happened? Oh, we, we just got to uh, the current spot. Oh, the purple trend line kind of uh, messed me up a little, a little bit here. So we are currently trying to break trend. Again, th this, this is not an excuse to buy here. You wouldn't have even gotten filled at 13. It's, it's very rare. So you would have gotten filled at 14 and uh, you're, you're still kind of breaking down trend here. This, again, this is just not an excuse to buy because we now have to hold this level right here in order to break up. How likely is failure versus uh, trying to come back and test this level, right? We're trying to create trend right now. So right now in Dent, we are trying to do this trend here now. We are trying to create this right here okay so this has succeeded we're going to delete this line this has not succeeded and this is what we are attempting to do this is the other type of trade as to where we identified this as a risk trade right we identified this as a risk trade that uh, and we'll, we'll go back and talk about risk we are now identifying this origin level this origin break as a different type of trade this is a breakout trade, right? So you have to understand that when you are buying these trades, it's very sloppy uh, way to spell break. That B is really bad, but that's okay. It's, uh, you guys can follow the break for breakout, risk for uh, risk trade. This is a very different type of level because there will be an impeding amount of pressure constantly attack this level till it gets to this breakout point here. Just like we had this break point uh, from this trend to this trend, there is that decision people will make here uh, mentally. That, that this is a different type of trade that has to happen. Just like when you have a breakout trade passing this origin level here, the way you reduce risk in this move is, is you, you buy the actual breakout and not the in-between. By buying this in-between, all you are doing is hoping that your uptrend holds. If you are praying that your uptrend holds, you never really have a, a, an actual reason to uh, exit this trade other than to just sit there and hold and, and hope it holds. And, most of the time what happens on these uptrends is this. You go up, you test the level, you test it again, it's an origin level, you kind of come to this point and then you fail down and you, you break down to this and, and you recreate the cycle of, of risk all the way out here uh, to break that trend somewhere out here and you, you move up again, right? So this is the problem with buying the in-between of the risk position will give you the most amount of gains with the least amount of potential losses. If you are buying the in-between because it looks like an uptrend, this is also a higher risk spot. So actually, technically, the, the two lowest risk positions here are the breakout positions and the risk positions. Even though they're called risk, they are actually the, uh, the best two positions that anybody can take because this is con a risk position is controllable um, and you have less losses in, in the event of something moving down. When you are buying a breakout position, it's the same thing. You have the option to enter at any time you want. If you were watching this thing on a five minute chart and it got so intense that it comes to one of these two or three minute decision points, you can, you can see it and you can be part of the pack and buy it. And if, if that's breaking out, you know that you have a profit of, you know, 40%. And, and if your profit is 40% on this move, well, actually let's move it one set down lower. Your profit is 35. What does your risk become? Your risk becomes seeing the failure, which usually allows you to get out at the same price or even one sat lower. So then your risk becomes uh, 6% to 35%. So you're, you're roughly still in a 10 to one position or, or nine to one position. Oh no, that's not nine to one. That's not 10 to one. What am I saying? That's uh, six, 18, 24, 30, 36. So it's six to one position, which is still fantastic odds. And, and that's not saying you can't exit at the same price because the price keeps pushing up, but you see failure for another reason. In, in this scenario here, where you have increased your potential profits to maybe 53%, you, you've also increased your risk to back down to these lower levels at, at 27%, 28%. And this is where people lose a lot of money, right? They kind of take these uptrend positions. And, and they're, either, they're either buying somewhere in the middle of the ladder, right? Or they are buying somewhere 
just just a sat above the bottom, two sats above the bottom. But but really, when you're identifying the risk side, that's that's why you take this trade, right? You take this trade here because uh, it has the least amount of losses associated with it. It's it's not always about how much money you can make if it goes from here to here. It's about taking the trades that have the best statistical advantage, right? As to where if you are buying this breakout position uh, in this trade, there is not a lot that you can lose here unless you naively just watch the breakout fail and 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 let it fail. But then this becomes a uh, a poor judgment of, of trading on your behalf, right? Because this is now a risk position in the sense that it requires a lot of time management, right? You are buying a breakout, but this requires a large amount of focus and time. Uh, it's just the same with risk, right? So when you are looking at these positions, um, again, you have to have an excuse to enter these trades. Um, an excuse cannot be, oh, it's trending up either identify a breakout or identify the uh, low. And when you identify the low, the low can be the exact thing we talked about. So if you actually go back to the charts here, I identified this low on Dent as 12 sats. I identified the ladder at 12 sats, which means I'm buying at 13, right? My, my buy order would be at 13. So if, if, because this has no obligation to go and test 12, all it has to do is, is, is sell one penny into 12 sats and it'll kiss it and bounce right off. And that's super common. So I'm buying at 13. Whether I got filled here at 13 or not is another case of scenario. But if I'm not getting filled at 13, the next, uh, the next target I'm buying is 17 because I am buying this breakout. I am not buying the in-between targets to see if they can uh, potentially push you because that's where you lose money. Uh, buying some float halfway between when, when you're not testing breakout, the testing breakout is a reason to buy. This is an excuse to buy. Whether you make 10%, 15%, 20%, it doesn't matter. This is an excuse to buy. This is an excuse to buy. This is an excuse to buy. These are not excuses to buy. This becomes uh, impatience and, and a misunderstanding of how to assess uh, risk in a trade. So when we look at Dent as it's moving forward here throughout the days, sure, Dent looks great. It's attacking an origin level. But again, how likely is failure right now? Because Dent has the obligation to move up. It, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually have to move up, but it has an obligation. If you want to make money on this trade, the obligation for Dent, the minimum that has to happen on Dent is that it has to move up in price against an origin level, which could just be onset of the failure. There is no obligation for Dent to move up. The only thing it can do is hold sideways, break straight down and test the new low or, or come and back test this whole level, which we identified at first, which now if you move trend out here another day, uh, this could potentially be the point where it breaks, which you might as well at this point get rid of this local trend because it's just going to uh, inter intersect with this. So now when you, when you have that knowledge and you, you take a look at this thing, how likely do you think it's going to move up against this wedge and, and, and break out some crazy target? Well, it's probably going to attack this origin level and then come back and hold this for, for a longer term ladder against this. And, and when, when this origin level is going to break, you have to actually come up and, and break this moment too at once. We've talked about this handshake moment where trend and the level combine and meet into to this one moment of break like that. This is a breakout moment right here. If it can reach up here, it doesn't have to do that. It, it could just simply uh, fail down here, um, go against trend out to here, out into the July and then have a larger reaction because it doesn't have to worry about trend and that level. Like this is, there's a lot of obligation here to uh, make that breakout. Th th this is not really, in my opinion, this is not a good trade to take because although it may break out, it, it is a high risk position because we've identified a level, uh, some, some weird float position between the two. 